Hi, my name is Liz Hathaway and this is my astrological look at the week ahead. That's the week starting the 25th of February 2019. So today we have Venus in Capricorn on the south node. Interesting sort of position always when planets are around the south node because the south node is both about release and letting go and sort of surrendering in some way but it's also about wisdom from the past it's also with certainly with Capricorn wisdom from the ancestors the female line of the family and this is happening on the day that Mercury is trying in the north node Mercury in Pisces trying in the north node and sextile in the south node so we have a lot of nodal activity on Monday and in a way that Mercury in Pisces, if you kind of look at it, it's, it's, a, it's a planet to watch in a way over the coming weeks. Mercury in Pisces is traditionally seen to be in its detriment. Why? Well, if we look at, you know, Mercury in a sign of rulership, opposite Pisces, we have Virgo. Mercury in Virgo is self-explanatory. Mercury in Virgo can lay things out in a way that it's completely comprehensible and you can follow the instructions and do it yourself. And, you know, it's a sort of a kind of very um, practical, sort of very quite verbal as well, Mercury. When we get to Mercury in Pisces, this we're talking about Mercury connected to the invisible world. Mercury that is getting its information from a completely different source. Mercury in Pisces is psychic. It's full on psychic. It's it's tuning into the collective. It's picking up on ideas and thoughts. So certainly today it could be the family relative or someone from the other side is trying to communicate. You know, there's a sort of a messaging quality. But Mercury in Pisces is just it's 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 the, an area in some respects that this Mercury is tapping into, it defies words, it defies reason. We cannot explain it away, but we cannot explain it properly either, and yet it's there. And Mercury now in Pisces is going to have a little jig around because it reaches the end of Pisces, almost the last minutes, and then it's like Mercury then goes retrograde on the 5th of March, a day actually before Uranus changes sign and moves into Taurus. On the 5th of March, we get the slowdown and retrograde of Mercury, which means it's going to contact the nodes again. It's going to contact them twice again. On the 15th of March, we're going to have a rerun of this Mercury trine the North Node. And then when Mercury goes direct on the 25th of March, we'll see on the 10th of April, then we get the final Mercury trine the North Node and in that retrograde period Mercury is going to square Jupiter again and that is an interesting one because Mercury in Pisces you know Jupiter is the old ruler actually of um, of Pisces so you know Mercury honours Jupiter and yet Jupiter in Sagittarius this is the sign where Mercury again is in its detriment so it could be you know it could be that there is an equality in a relationship here and where one person is looking up to the knowledge and the insights and you know the um you know that what it perceives to be as superior knowledge where and 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 then the person with the superior knowledge is sort of looking in a way um sort of um looking down almost on, um, on, 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 on the other person. So it's an imbalanced relationship in some respects between Mercury and um, Jupiter. So you could ask yourself in this process, in this whole process leading up to actually Mercury's exit of Pisces, which is on the 17th of April, who are you looking up to? Who um, is not feeding you, but you are feeding? Yeah, who are you giving energy to and who is taking energy only from you? Because Venus on the south node, as I say, this may be a relationship to that you need to let go of. And I think this there's a sort of a knowledge perhaps that is, um, shall we say, sensed and felt, but it's not yet conscious in a way. That's Mercury and Pisces as well. 
and it's on it's trying to honor your own growth trying to honor your own feeling the north node in cancer and possibly having the guts to cut some ties here in the course of this mercury retrograde period mercury contact in the node so, so that's an interesting longer term theme which won't have completely played out i think until april the 17th when mercury moves into um, into Aries. We also have this week Sun in Pisces, sextile Mars in Taurus on Thursday. I mean Mars in Taurus is fixed, obstinate, set in its ways, on its course, plod, plod, plod. You know, it's a bull, you can't pick it up, you can't move it, it's doing its thing. And yet now this lovely Sun in Pisces, which is mutable, which is able to morph and change and you know you try catching a fish you know it can easily switch and change direction so it's a completely different um, quality than that Mars in Taurus so it's like you know this obstinacy encountering some very persuasive um, Piscean energy you know so it's like arguments can shift you know there's emotionally compelling new information coming in obstacles are being moved, fixed earth is becoming mud, we can mould it, we can shape it. So this is nice energy going on, certainly in the second half of the week. Friday we have Venus just on the edge of Capricorn then squaring Uranus, which is about to exit um, Aries. So we could say here as well, breaking old patterns, breaking old ways of doing things, again because we've just had Venus on the south node, release, let go, shed. Venus in Aquarius is much airier and it's good because we've had a real shortage of planets in air actually. Yeah, so in fact when Venus moves into Aquarius on Friday it's kind of Whew, there's suddenly a bit of air in there. It's kind of quite stuffy when all the planets are in water and in earth signs. So we have had, of course, Uranus in Aries and Jupiter in Sag, but there's been a lack of air, a lack of perspective. And all the planets as well within a 180 degree sort of the zodiac. So we've only got half the picture. It's not the complete, um, the complete view we're getting. And a bit of air would be good because that just offers us some more perspective. And then we get into the weekend, you know, as I say, on Fridays where we've got Venus moving into Aquarius. And then on Saturday, the moon goes into Aquarius and conjuncts Venus. So there's a lot more air coming. There's a lot more room to breathe in a way. OK, thank you for listening and have a great week. Bye.